I grew up on Lake Erie. Lake Erie is the 11th largest lake in the world, and it is roughly 300 times the size of Lake Geneva. And when I was seven, I was told that I couldn't swim in it anymore. I thought the reason for this was pollution from power plants like the one that you see on the screen. As it turns out, that's approximately half the issue. Also a contributing factor is runoff from farms, fertilizers, nitrogen, phosphorus that are helping contribute to harmful algae blooms that make the water completely unfit for recreational use, let alone as a source of drinking water. And as a seven-year-old, I experienced this problem intimately, but I didn't have the technologies that I needed to really understand it in scientific depth. In 2015, I went to China for the first time. And I visited a few towns at the foothills of the Himalayas, and I realized that they are encountering the exact same issues in human and environmental health that I grew up with. These problems are intimate, and they're personal to those who are experiencing them. And if these people were to ask a question about these problems, it would be something like, is our water safe to drink? Is our lake safe to swim in? But these local questions can also be seen through a global lens. And the question can become something like, what is the impact of different point source pollutants on ambient water quality? And how does this impact human health in the short, intermediate, and long term? And addressing these problems on a global scale requires a lot of data, but is also really impactful because it can trickle down to advance not only global research, but also decisions that are made on local levels. New technologies allow us to monitor the health of our planet in unprecedented detail. And citizen science is a process where members of the public contribute to authentic scientific research to meet real-world goals. Citizen science has been growing in the past few years for a number of reasons. There's the proliferation of low-cost ICT, like mobile phones, and the changing attitudes in the scientific research community, and around funders about the value of democratized research. Citizen science is a form of open science that is enabled by and supports other forms of open science, like open hardware, open data, and open access publication. Here's where we are in 2019. 1.5 million people contributed to World Water Monitoring Day. This is a single day. In the longer term, there are thousands of projects that are available on all seven continents, and you can also analyze data from outer space. The economic value of biodiversity monitoring alone is valued at $2.5 billion. But these projects are unfolding in silos. The people are not connected, and neither are the data. And there's a second issue. People in the scientific research community still see citizen science as a form of science light. Just yesterday, while I was walking to Frontier's headquarters, I met a new colleague who asked what my talk was about. And when I said citizen science, his gut check reaction was, oh, you do education and outreach. I think I rolled my eyes. And that was an immature response. What I should have said is, I do data innovation. And I hope that you'll listen to the rest of this talk with that point in mind. But first, April 22nd is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And the Wilson Center is teaming up with Earth Day Network and the US Department of State to launch Earth Challenge 2020 as the world's largest coordinated citizen science campaign to date. We seek to help coordinate existing activities and build capacity for new endeavors with the goal of engaging millions of people in collecting and integrating one billion high-quality, open, and interoperable data points across human and environmental health. Our primary goal is to break down silos between people and between existing data sets. And our secondary goal is to demonstrate, once and for all, that citizen science is a critical pipeline for producing the information that we need to, from a scientific perspective, and through the lens of science, understand and help solve the world's pressing global issues. 
2018, my role at the Wilson Center is ensuring the research and data integrity aspects of this project. So we started with the public. We launched a broad call for people to tell us the critical issues and human and environmental health. We received hundreds of responses from all seven continents, including Antarctica, where people are really interested in microbes and ice. And we distilled these into six overarching research questions. Is my air safe to breathe? Is my water safe to drink? How are insect populations changing? What is the extent of plastics pollution? Is my food supply sustainable? And the mother of all questions, in my opinion, what are the local impacts of climate change? In early 2019, building on some earlier work we did with the disease vector monitoring community, we're convening researchers into six research teams who will co-design the exact protocols for answering these and then also validating the data that comes in. So these are experts who are from the scientific and citizen science research community working alongside educators to co-design the project and make sure that the data Earth Challenge produces will be useful, usable, and actually used in research. We're also hosting global hackathons. My favorite are with DataKind, which is a nonprofit that brings data scientists together for a social good. And these events help us understand how different types of data can be integrated in a meaningful and rigorous way, and also how we can develop a, uh, modeling procedures to be able to add value to additional information and validate the wealth of information that's going to be coming in. We launch in 2020. Our partners at the Earth Day Network are developing a What You Can Do Toolkit. And this is curated materials, bringing education to volunteers, and then also inspiring action by highlighting different policy interventions, such as conservation laws. And the What You Can Do Toolkit will be customized, so it will serve up information that's different if you're taking a water quality observation on Lake Erie versus, for example, if you're monitoring mangroves in Southeast Asia. We're also launching a global experience. Earth Day Network is talking to the Italian Ministry of Education to give every secondary schooler in Italy Earth Day off to do citizen science. And the U.S. Department of State is working with 200 embassies and consulates and partnering them with local science institutions, including museums and universities, to make this global project locally relevant across the world. This is sort of the anatomy of a citizen science revolution. So we're working with groups like the Open Geospatial Consortium to develop a new data and metadata standard that will facilitate the collection and exchange of interoperable information and will critically also develop the metadata around things like data quality. We know that citizen science projects are already recruiting trained volunteers. They're offering rigorous training for other volunteers. They're sending volunteers out in groups. They're doing data validation in the field. They're calibrating instruments. And then once the data comes in, they're interrogating it through expert-based and machine-based techniques. If you compare this to ecology research that often sends out undergraduates to do work on behalf of their advisors, I think it's clear that citizen science is producing high-quality information. These practices just aren't documented in a way that resonates with a range of research communities. Yet, we're also creating an open data directory so that people can register their information and talk about the different things that they're doing. We're creating a mobile application framework. Uh, this will come preloaded with six data collection widgets that align with the Earth Challenge 2020 research questions, but people will also be able to create their own widgets so that they can start any data collection campaign anywhere in the world. In terms of the civic education, I already talked about what you can do. Earth Day Network is also staging global teach-ins. And the whole point of this project goes back to scale. We're enabling the local to global connection so that when people pick a research question that resonates with them and helps solve an issue that they're experiencing in their backyard, they're also contributing to a global research effort and facilitating monitoring against global policy benchmarks like the Sustainable Development Goals. We're also taking a solve to X approach for this by creating the reusable technological infrastructure that will allow people to collect high quality data in any research area related to Earth systems. 2020-20 is launch. Our goal is to deliver 1 billion open, findable, accessible, 
interoperable, and reusable data points in these six research areas. And I'd like to stress that this is data collected in scales and granularities that are not available through professional scientific research. And combined with other data gathering techniques like Earth observations, citizen science will deliver a critical pipeline of information that can help us understand and solve the world's pressing issues. A lot of our partners, ranging from funders to the United Nations, understand the value of this as essentially taking a snapshot for where we are in collaborative science in 2020. And these partners are excited to take this and run with it and use the reusable technologies and data standards that we're creating to do targeted capacity building campaigns in areas that are of value to them. I'm here because this is an amazing community of disruptors and innovators, and we're looking for partners. We're looking for individuals who see value in the data that we're compiling and are willing to join with the research teams to help shape the protocols and validation strategies and then ideally publish on those results. In terms of publication, we're also looking for people who are interested in launching a research topic around Earth Challenge 2020 to further build and strengthen the link between citizen science and open access as two forms of open science. And then we're also really inspired by the, the work of young minds because there's already a lot of experience there developing content that is scientifically rigorous, but also appeals to a range of audiences like children and potentially the public policy community. So I'd like to thank you for listening to this presentation and encourage you to find me after.